Just because our process is in control in terms of our control chart and our control limits does not necessarily mean that all the product we produce out of that process is within specification. To be able to tell that, we have to use process capability and capability index. So let's take a look at how those tell us if our product is within specification. Here we'll differentiate between control limits and specification or spec limits. We'll look at the difference between process capability and capability index. And finally, we'll use those to analyze a process and determine if we're producing any product out of specification. Control limits are not the same thing as specification limits. The control limits is the normal variation in our process or what our process is capable of producing. So that would be the range in moisture content or protein content or flavor or texture. Uh, and the specification limits is the product variation that's acceptable to our consumer or our customer. So this doesn't necessarily line up with our control limits. An easy way to think about this is a car in a parking space. So let's take a look at this car right here. Our control limits, the teal limits, is how wide our car is. Our car is not getting any skinnier than those limits. So as long as our parking space is at least as wide as the control limits, then we can park our car within that space. If we have a parking space the side of the specification limits shown here, these purple lines, then yes, our car can completely fit inside those specification lines so we can park our car comfortably in that space. Our car meets the specifications. But if that was a narrower parking space and our specification limits were inside our control limits, there's nothing we can do to get our car in that space. The car is as wide as it is. It's not going to get any skinnier just because we want a skinnier parking space. Now this sounds kind of obvious, but where we run into problems is where our customer wants tighter specifications in what our product can produce or our process can produce. If we try to get that process to fit the specification limits and we can't reduce the variation of our process, there's no way we can meet those specifications. We're going to have to pull out product on the high and low sides in order to meet spec. Process capability is the spread of the process values in our process. So how big a range we have in temperature or flow rate or weight of a box, something like that. So this corresponds to how wide our car is, right here. To get process capability, one way is to use the control limits on an X bar and R chart. When our process is totally in control and consistently in control, then those control limits are usually the process capability. That's how much variation you get naturally in your process. So if we have our specification limits here in purple, our process capability doesn't necessarily tell us anything about the specification, but it tells us how wide our car is, basically. So if we know that our car, for example, this car on the right, is wider than our parking space or our specification limits, we know that there's pretty much nothing we can do to make those specification limits. We have to change our process in some way to reduce those variations. However, if we have a skinnier car, like the one in the middle, we know that we're in specification limits and we'll be just fine meeting specification as long as our process doesn't change. The capability index, or C sub P, combines our process capability that we just saw with the process tolerance. The tolerance is the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit. So this gives us a better idea of are we in specification or not. If we look at the cars here, the car on the left and in the center are clearly within specification. The car in the center more so because it can shift one way or the other slightly and still meet our specification limits. However, the car on the right has a mirror that's hanging out over the specification limit. So the capability index would tell us, hey, your process is out of specification. You're outside the parking space you need to be in. CP varies around one. If the capability index is greater than one, our tolerance is greater than our process capability. This means that our car is smaller than our parking space, and so we can 
fit into our parking space or make sure we're within the specification limits, even if we park slightly crooked, even if the car drifts one side or the other, we can still be in those specification limits. If our capability index is equal to one, our tolerance is equal to our process capability. So our car is just skinny enough to fit in that parking space. And if we shift at all, one direction or the other, we're going to be outside of our specification limits. So it's okay if CP equals one, but this is not an ideal scenario to be in. Your process has to be very fine-tuned and very exact for you to meet the specification limits. It cannot drift at all. If your CP is less than one, that means your tolerance is less than your process capability. So we have a big car right here that clearly does not fit in the parking space. So we have this car that's hanging over the parking space on both sides. There's nothing we can do to get this car completely into the parking space. That means our process can't meet the specification limits as is regardless of what we try to do. We're going to have to either chop off our side mirrors or we're going to have to do something about our process to reduce the amount of variation we have so that our process capability gets smaller and our variance goes down. There's a problem here. The capability index does not account for our process center. So we look at these three cars, we see, okay, the car in the middle right here, regardless of what we do, this is a big car, and it's probably not going to meet specification even if we do manage to park it in the center of the spot, like the car on the left. However, the car on the right, that's a skinny little car. This would be a subcompact, and it should fit within our specification limits just fine. However, somebody did a terrible parking job, and our car is outside the specification limits. But we wouldn't know that if we just looked at capability index, because all capability looks at is the ratio of the tolerance to the process capability. And since our tolerance is wider than our process capability, this little car if we don't account for where the center line is, seems to be in spec. If we want to take a look at where the process center is, we use something called CPK. When CPK equals one, that means not only is our process tolerance, or sorry, our tolerance equal to our process capability, but we are also centered between those specification limits. So we did a nice straight parking job right here on the left and our car just meets our specification limits. If the CPK is less than one, two things could be happening. One is that we are too big for the specification limits. Our car is too wide for this parking space. Our process variation is too big to meet specification. Another thing that can happen is that our process center is shifted so far out of the center of our specification limits that we are going over one edge of our specification limits. So we did a horrible job parking our car here, and even though it's a skinny car that should fit within this parking space, we didn't make it because we did a very bad parking job. Similarly, our process variation is low enough that we should meet the specification limits. However, our center is shifted too far one way, so we can't meet specification with our center being where it is. Let's take a look at CP versus CPK. When our process is centered between the specification limits, your CP will equal CPK. CPK is always less than or equal to CP. It will never be greater than CP, and that's because CP does not account for the process center. So if your process is centered, and CP equals CPK, that's as big as CPK is going to be. As soon as you shift even slightly off center, CPK will drop, even though CP will be the same because it doesn't account for where the center is. Keep that in mind when you're calculating these values. If CPK equals one, your process is producing product in spec. Same thing with CP equaling one. You have product in spec. Same thing also with CPK and CP being greater than one. Greater than one means you have a little bit of wiggle room for your process center to shift slightly one way or the other and you'll still be in spec. If your CPK or CP is less than one, then your process is producing product out of specification. 
this is not good. This means you need to do something to realign your process with where it needs to be. If CPK equals zero, the average equals a specification limit. So this means your process center is actually centered on a specification limit. Basically, you are parked directly between two parking spaces and something is definitely wrong there. You are not at all meeting spec. If CPK is less than zero, if it is negative, your average, your process center, is actually outside of your specification limits. This means that very little product you are producing is within specification and you need to radically change your process to deal with this and get your product back into specification. Notice we didn't go over any of the calculations for CP, CPK, and process capability. There are calculations for them and that will be provided later in the lecture module. This information is used once you've calculated CP and CPK to judge where you are in terms of process and product specifications and make sure you're correctly aligned with your specifications so you're not producing wasted product that you need to either reprocess or throw away.